OK, let's take a look at minerals. Minerals are chemical compounds found in the mantle. Remember that the mantle is that part of the earth just below the solid crust where the, um, the rocks are melted. And they're a bit like melted plastic or um, semi-melted chocolate. Some examples of some minerals would include malachite, hematite, and quartz. Notice those chemical symbols. That's there to, um, to help you to remember that those chemical, um, that those minerals are chemical compounds. I don't expect you uh, to memorize the chemical formula of malachite, for example. Now, when the mantle cools, the minerals will freeze. And when they do this, they will form crystals. So that's an example of a crystal of malachite that formed when the mantle cooled and that malachite uh, froze solid. That's an example of hematite. And that's an example of quartz. Notice that they're all um, crystals. What's the difference, though, between a mineral and a rock? Well, a mineral is a pure substance. Remember, it's a chemical compound. Rocks are mixtures of minerals, so mixtures of those pure substances. So what you can see on the screen now is a rock that contains uh, the mineral magnet, uh, malachite. So um, the rock is the parts of that sample that are gray or reddish in color. Um, and the, the malachite is the green part. So all of it together is a rock. Um, but the mineral is specifically that green malachite portion of that rock. On the right, you can see a rock that contains uh, a lot of hematite. So on the surface of that rock, you'll see bubbles. And um, those bubbles are the crystals of hematite that formed when the rock froze and solidified. What's the difference between a rock and an ore? Well, notice that minerals contain atoms of metals. Malachite, for example, contains copper atoms. There they are right there in the chemical formula. Chemists can perform reactions that can separate the copper atoms from the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that makes up the rest of the malachite. When we do that, we can get pure copper metal, which we can then uh, draw into electrical wire, for example, and sell. Hematite contains lots of iron atoms. There they are there in the chemical formula. Now, just like we were able to separate copper from malachite, we're able to separate iron from hematite. So we separate the iron atoms from the oxygen atoms, uh, and that will give us iron metal that we could then use to make steel, which we can sell. So that means uh, rocks that contain lots of malachite are called copper ore. And rocks that contain lots of hematite are called iron ore. This means that money can be made by mining these rocks and extracting the metal for later sale. Rocks that are really high in quartz are not usually called ores unless they include, unless they include other more valuable minerals. Uh, and that's because silicon is not particularly valuable. It's not valuable because it's really, really abundant. Quartz, and therefore the silicon that it contains, is one of the most uh, abundant metals that make up the minerals, sorry, that make up the um, rocks of the Earth's crust. So there's so much of it around that it's just not very valuable. So we wouldn't likely call it an ore. That means that ores are rocks which contain valuable quantities of valuable minerals. 
Now, this bit really isn't something that you need to memorize, but it's a little bit interesting. And that is just, what's a gemstone? Um, some minerals can be cut and polished, or can simply be polished, to look extremely beautiful. These are called gemstones, and we use them in jewelry. Some examples would be sapphire, or topaz, or emerald. And that's what we need you to know about minerals today.